What's happening my YouTube friends? Pete over here, Craigless Hunter. Good morning, good day, good afternoon and maybe good evening to you guys, whatever time you're watching this. So today you're probably thinking it's Sunday that I'm gonna show you quite a few new, uh, new items that I sold lately. Well today, that's not the case actually. Today um, I got a totally different topic uh, and it is about how to be a successful reseller and if it's even possible to be a successful reseller these days. So it's actually a very hard question to answer. Is it hard? Yes, probably uh, I would say that it is hard. Lots of determination. Um, lots of discipline just like any business you gotta really uh, be really focused and know what you want and how you approach things um, I want to tell you guys a little story because you keep asking me I'm getting a lot of messages through YouTube through my uh, uh, Facebook messenger uh, questions keep popping up to uh, to talk about a little bit what you guys should do especially new guys <clears throat> trying in to get into resale business uh, what you should do what should you look for how you should approach this business um, it's a very hard question to answer especially in a short video the topic is so huge um, that will probably take hours and hours to answer it correctly but I'm gonna give you try to give you at least few pointers um, how you should approach this and what to do to be a little bit successful you know a lot a lot of people think that um, that you can jump in into this and you're gonna be making who knows what overnight and you're gonna be on top of the world well that's not exactly how it works and just like any business guys I mean it's almost impossible and I ran few businesses in my life and some of them were very successful uh, some of them were complete failures so I'm, I'm talking here from experience I run a couple businesses right now that are pretty successful for a long time I've been in reselling business for a very long time so hopefully uh, you know I'm gonna try to keep it real and that's the most important thing a lot of people out there you know don't keep it real so but anyway I'm gonna give you guys a little story this happened probably about two three weeks ago um, I don't know if everybody is familiar with this but it was on the news um, that some guy in Phoenix Arizona found a watch for six dollars and I was able to flip that watch for 35 grand um, and they did an interview with him some local station in Phoenix did an interview with him and I watched that interview um, for some reason they tried to contact the person who bought the watch uh, apparently a collector for some reason he wasn't available they wouldn't disguise his name all they said uh, it's a collector in California Everything is nice and dandy with this store, okay? Um, yes, you can find some amazing things sometimes in, in uh, thrift stores or Goodwill, Salvation Army, Savers, all of them, you know? Or mom and pop shops or a flea market. Yes, you will hit them. How often? Huh, I don't know. <laughs> Not very often. Uh, especially scores like that, that you buy something for six grand and you can flip it for 35,000. <clears> now, I... This is what I want to tell you guys. Um, I believe this story is actually not true. I think it's a. I think it's a great, great marketing and advertising that uh, people of Goodwill came up with. Um, since they're basing everything on this hype lately, within the last I want to say four or five years, of people watching these crazy shows out there 
uh, you know, the American pickers, the pawn stars, yeah, I got them right here, gold and silver, you know, pawn stars, uh, drifting, and there, I mean, the, the barters, you know, storage wars, there's a ton of these shows they came up with in the last few years. And people really, really think that this is something that you can, you know, start tomorrow, go out there, and you're going to be making crazy money. Well, it's, I mean, it's, everything is nice and dandy. I mean, I love the shows too, and I love watching Pawn Stars. I actually know these guys for quite some time, from 1991, before they were even big. You know, I, was, I used to live in Las Vegas, um, and I know them from a previous shop that they had a little tiny shop. Uh, not the location that they have right now. But anyway, I mean, this is all nice and dandy, cool shows. Uh, remember, they got to make it interesting, okay? There's, I would, I want to say about 10% real and 90% Hollywood on these shows. And it's all cool because, you know, it's made for a public to make it interesting, to make it exciting, and, you know, so people keep watching. But reality is not there, you know? So anyway, going back to my story, um, the great watch find for six bucks and flipping for 35,000. Um, I don't think it works exactly like that. I actually know a uh, couple of the managers from, uh, one from Savers, one from Goodwill. And I talk to them frequently. One of them, actually, I became pretty good friends that works for Goodwill. Um, you know, they're pretty well trained, especially the managers. Anything that comes into their shop, donated. You know, they're trained to do intensive research on certain things. Um, some electronics especially jewelry, um, any watches, stuff like that, um, those are not being priced by regular folks that work in a back room. Those are actually priced by the managers. Um, and the funny thing is they even have, uh, they even have uh, gold asset testers, diamond testers. I mean, these people they're pretty well educated what they got to look for. Remember, it's their bottom line. There's bonuses involved. Each store, if it's doing better, you know, everybody is getting rewarded. So they're doing their homework. They know what's going on. Um, you know, especially sometimes when you see those glass cases that they have and they, you know, the more valuable things that they put in the cases. And sometimes you'll see a printout, you know, like they do a printout from eBay. Uh, that something is selling, exactly, let's say, for $100 and they are offering for $70. So they do their research. So uh, me personally, I don't think, you know, something like that happened that, you know, this guy found this amazing watch. Uh, you know, they know what to look for. They know the names Rolex, Omega, you know, they know what's going on. Um, so you know it's a great publicity and they put it on the news and people start talking about it i mean it's a great free advertisement for goodwill you know and then people are rushing to these drift stores looking for items and thinking that they're gonna strike gold um it's not exactly like that um you know and these shows are, are designed for everybody to think that you know there's gold out there all you got to do is just go pick it up you know put it online on ebay amazon whatever craigslist all these different platforms and you're going to make a killing um you know it's it's a lot of hollywood i mean you know i've been approached by a couple different networks as well in my shop um actually one of them wttw channel 11 came out and we did shot um we did shot uh, the whole one episode. They wanted to find out how we do business, what we do, and how we do it. And never aired. Um, and they told us later on that we were, you know, too real. That we keep it real. That, you know, we don't want to talk about the excitement, the crazy things that come in. And we make, you know, all kinds of money. So it didn't work out. Never, never made a show. You know, we had another network approached us. Uh, they came out, we did, did the interview with them, and, um, you know, 
I think I, I, I personally, I think I killed the interview because I wanted to keep it real. I wanted to show how it is, you know, I wanted to show the behind the scenes and, and you know, how it is really out there and how hard it is and, and what it takes to, to get, um, uh, to the level that I am right now and you know they wanted to do more Hollywood and I understand that but it's it's not my thing so maybe eventually one time um, you know something will happen that's why I'm here on YouTube because I love to share with you guys what I know and how it is and give you pointers and show you what to buy and what to sell I mean for me this is real life you know and know this crazy you know Ah, I just enough of that so anyway guys um, you know I want to show you a little clip to tell you actually to show you how it is out there because you know this reselling thing became so popular um, that you got actually ton of ton of competition out there people that you think that they can make a fortune and they really don't know what they're doing but um, any place I go if it's you know drift stores you know the Goodwills the Salvation Armies or the flea market or garage sales or estate sales I see more and more and more competition <clears throat> and uh, you know people are scooping up things that they have no idea and uh, and they're overpaying for stuff and it's definitely a lot harder to find good good things I'm, I'm gonna show you really quick this is just few days I took this footage of uh, of people in Goodwill how quickly you can spot how much competition you are dealing with and and I'm in Goodwill there for maybe five ten minutes and it, it shows you um, you know how many people are uh, looking for stuff and uh, it's just amazing just let, let's watch this uh, very short clip So yeah, I think this was pretty interesting. You can see, you know, guys with the phones all the time looking for different stuff. You know, when they bring out cards like in Goodwill, people are like, you know, scavengers. They just run to the to those cards and uh, and look for stuff. It's just it's just amazing and funny at the same time. But uh, you know, so there's a lot of competition out there, uh, especially when you are in a climate like I am in winter time there's a lot less resources that you can go after obviously you don't have as many estate sales you don't have any garage sales period I mean hardly any no flea markets maybe a couple here and there indoor flea markets so a lot of, of this stuff you know you gotta go to Goodwills and me myself I do a little bit of that but I 
I do focus a lot on Craigslist. Um, you know, a little bit different ball game with the Craigslist, and, and I showed you guys that in some of my videos because you actually got to go after bigger things and, and spend bigger money um, to make some money. You know, you're not going to pick up things for, you know, two, three, five dollars or even ten dollars, you know, at, at garage sales and flip it for good profit. No, here I'm going on Craigslist and, and trying to pick up things, you know, for 50, 100 bucks and, you know, sometimes even few hundred bucks um, but that's what it is in my climate so that's you know I recommend uh, maybe I don't recommend this at the beginning to to you folks new to the business uh, but those experienced ones yeah you can definitely make some very very good money off Craigslist um, another thing is you know there's Maybe not scammers, I don't want to call them scammers, but people are taking advantage of this, you know, they thinking that it's an opportunity for them to make some money. There's a ton of uh, videos out there, especially in the YouTube land, that they're just flat out scary, man. Some of these people are, you know, telling you that you're going to spend, you know, $16 and you're going to turn it into, you know, 18000 within a week. I mean, come on, uh, be real. I, I hope you guys are not falling for all that crap. You know, just, just telling you to, to buy my, you know, program or whatever, you know, spend $300 on this, you know, one of a kind program that I invented, how to make millions on eBay. Shit doesn't exist, okay? It just doesn't exist. I'm getting frustrated because, you know, some of these guys are just ridiculous. The system, the universities that they create of selling, come on. Um, there's only a few good people, I think, actually, that I've been following for a long time on YouTube, that they know what they are talking about. Um, and you should guys really watch them if you want to make your business successful, uh, especially reselling on eBay. Maybe not so much, you know, Craigslist um, and Amazon, but eBay. There's a lot of good people, a lot of good content out there. Um, and though, you know, some of these guys, you know, they'll, they'll have their own books or whatever that, you know, but that's a good content. You know, these people just from watching them. And I can tell if I can spot a bad guy or a good guy, okay? Um, just from experience i know if people are talking nonsense it's nonsense okay so but there's few guys out there that actually have some good books out there and you know they're not charging a whole lot of you know money for them so those i could definitely recommend you know if you're gonna spend 20 30 50 bucks no big deal it's not like you got sucked in for thousands of dollars but just be careful out there you know um and remember i mean <clears throat> these guys are putting a lot of content out there you know a lot of good videos a lot of good information so they want to be rewarded in some way and i understand you know you can you can create some kind of pamphlet or a book you know that you can sell for a few bucks for all the time that you're spending making all these videos and sharing all this information and this is all cool i got not, no problem with that um obviously you know just from making videos and trying to make living off youtube uh, it's not going to happen unless you have, you know, millions of subscribers and millions of views and then you may be going to make some decent money. Uh, you know, me personally, I'm not trying to sell you guys anything. I never will. I never did. Uh, maybe one day I'll create a t-shirt with Craigslist Hunter name on it and I'll sell it to you for five bucks on eBay. I don't know, but it's just be careful out there, guys. I mean, it's, it's, it's a funny world man people are trying to take advantage of people uh and that's the nature of the business i guess i mean that's nature of the beast it's just the way it is you know there are always going to be some scammers out there but um actually let me give you let me let me give some shout outs to some channels that i enjoy watching and i think it's an excellent content and people have been doing this for a long time they know what they're talking about um some great videos great information um let me think 
I think my my favorite of all of them uh, would be Scavenger Life. Uh, fantastic channel. Um, these guys, uh, it's a husband and wife team, and they show. Um, they have a podcast mainly, and so you can listen to them. They do like a one-hour podcast once, uh, once, uh, once a week for about an hour, and it's very interesting to hear their story, what they are doing, and what the sales are, and how they are approaching everything. And once in a while, they'll throw in a video, um, you know, of actual items that they sold. That they sold. I, I really enjoy uh, their podcast. Uh, they know what they're talking about it's not you know they haven't been around the block for a month and creating some crazy book they never try to sell you anything so that's a fantastic channel scavenger life um second really good channel that i enjoyed i've been watching for a long time since he started making videos many years ago it's terminal 99 um no bullshit straightforward um knows exactly what he's talking about you can tell um has a lot of experience so yeah terminal 99 fantastic um who else um global voodoo actually mike uh, i know mike personally we met a couple times uh we did some business together uh very good content uh, he's been making videos for a long time he's been around the block knows his stuff so good shout out to uh to mike from global voodoo uh andrew from picking profits uh another great guy very down to earth tells it like it is um enjoy watching his videos um and uh who else am i thinking uh, oh and of course you know <laughs> makes all kinds of videos on a lot of different subjects but mainly about reselling and motivation videos Steve from Raking Profit, incredible guy. I love the energy. The energy is unbelievable with Steve and the content that he puts out and the time he spends on it every day or every other day, Steve will have a video out there. Uh, and he specializes, you know, he's got his niche with clothing, uh, which is very cool. He knows what he's talking about. Um, so he's he's another great guy to watch yeah uh, Steve from Raking Profit I, I enjoy his videos um, and at the same time um, one of his companions I think they all belong to the green room thing um, um, uh, Bonafide Hustler um, I love his videos too and he'll throw in some different things here and there uh, but I mainly on, on his channel I see lately that he just runs the green room uh, but still very good information um, fun to watch and the guy knows what he's talking about and what else I'm thinking oh golden finger picker as well uh, pretty good content uh, I can tell the guy has been around the block for some time um, and he knows that's he's one of those old school guys i can tell right away that back in the day when there's no phones and smartphones you know that's one of the guys you want to watch that he knows what he's speaking and what he's talking about so yeah this was a little shout out to some of the guys that i enjoy watching personally and i think uh, anybody that is new to the game should uh, check out all these channels um lots of good content lots of good information um so yeah all right, I'm rambling now. Let's uh, let's get back into the topic. Pointers that I can give you to be successful reseller. Knowledge is everything. Educate yourself constantly. Um, you know, technology is fantastic these days and very very helpful. Um, and anybody can have the smartphone with them now and uh, do the research. So. <sighs> you guys keep asking me what's the best items to buy what do you, I should look for what should I resell uh, and my answer is uh, everything because that's the only way you're gonna learn okay you gotta look out there for stuff that it's unique of course uh, different but anything sells 
if you get it at the right price, anything sells. Now, it's the bottom question is how much money you want to make. You know, do you want to buy, you know, item constantly for $5 and flip it for 15 Or do you want to buy the item for $25 and flip it for 100 um, You know, this is how I look at it, especially if you're thinking to do strictly reselling let's say based on on ebay um one of the best and easiest platforms to get in onto um and one of the platforms that you can pretty much sell anything on it i love ebay i've been doing business on ebay for a very very long time um i've been kicked off of ebay uh it took me a while to get back on it i have a couple different accounts um but it's a fantastic platform i don't care what anybody says um ebay in my book is is the best platform to to sell on and do your research on it um it's just a matter of educating yourself you know what you want to sell so yeah it's easy to say let's say you know i want to have one specific niche and i'm going to concentrate on it and i'm going <clears> to <throat> sell this one particular item or items in that niche and be successful yes it's doable but it's it's getting harder and harder just to stick with one niche uh, especially when you have a lot of competition out there so i would always suggest if you can um try to have let's say 10 niches that you are really good at it, that you have enough information when you spot those items, you know right away, even without looking it up, that you can possibly make some good money on it. And if you have like those 10 niches, <clears throat> then you can venture out to some other things at the same time that you will come across and you can do research on them and figure out, you know, if you can make extra money. Remember, like I said, the technology is here uh, it makes it very easy for us to do, you know, quick research. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give you guys four tips, how I look at it, if uh, how to run a successful resale business, eBay business. Um, there's four ways I look at it that you can run it pretty successfully. Um, number one. You can sell, like I said earlier, pretty much anything out there. Um, so if you can, and this is not going to happen overnight. If you're thinking that you're going to make money, you know, as soon as you go out there, it's not going to happen. Okay. It will take months, if not years, before this is really profitable to you guys. Um, one way is build up your inventory you can sell anything if you buy it relatively cheap you put it in your ebay store you let it sit eventually there's going to be a buyer do your research put a right price on it that you feel comfortable with that it's you thinking that it's worth that money it will sell eventually it might take a month three months six months a year to sell that product but it will sell and if you paid five bucks for something and you're offering for 50 well you see the margin there right great profits but you got to build up that inventory and when you build up that inventory after a year or two you have you know five thousand items in your store then constantly something is selling in that store every day you have quite a few sales and you're making money and you putting more inventory in and now becomes a big, big cycle. That's one way of being very, very successful. Uh, and you can sell pretty much anything. Second way is concentrate. Like I said earlier, pick up 10 different niches that you want to sell, especially when it comes to collectibles. Uh, there's ton of collectors there. Okay ton and i mean people are collecting all kinds of stuff um me myself i'm a collector right behind me here you know i love you know fishing has been my life 
since I was a little boy, I love, you know, anything that has to do with fishing and I collect that kind of stuff. So there's ton of collectors on different things. If you educate yourself on items that are collectible, then you can make really, really good money. Um, and you don't have to have, you know, five, six thousand items in your store. It's enough if you have, you know, 500 to a thousand items in your store, but collectible. Um, so you got to educate yourself. What is it worth? How much you are willing to pay for it to make a profit? Um, and you can be very, very successful. Um, one of the example is if you want, guys want to check out Terminal 99, his channel, um that's the vibe i get from him that he's he knows what he's looking for um and he sells those you know things that people are looking for and he's you know and he's willing to pay a little bit more money uh, maybe not huge returns you know he will not spend three dollars to have a hundred dollars back he'll spend you know fifty dollars to get fifty dollars back but that's second second way of, of running your successful business on eBay um, the third way the third way I think is and it's very doable I actually this was a very great article about this guy I can't remember his name on top of my head right now but uh, he runs a very successful business uh, out of Australia um, he's been doing it for quite some time to and he sells only new products on eBay. Um, now his, maybe not niche, but he looks for the items, no brand names. You know, he's not selling iPhones. He's not uh, selling Nikes or GoPros or any of those crazy names. He looks for the items that are in a mid price range, meaning that, um, you know he's willing to spend let's say 50 60 dollars on a new product that constantly sells online for about 80 to 100 dollars and he's got that little margin of 20 25 percent that he constantly makes money on it um, these are no brand names like i said um, for example he will look for um, a gun safe, small gun safe that you can put a single gun inside, lock it up, uh, and it's made in China. Um, he'll make an order of 500 pieces. He'll buy them for 45 bucks, and he sells them 80 dollars all day long. And after his eBay fees and shipping and everything, you know, he's making 25 dollars on a piece. But he knows constantly that that particular item sell will sell about 10 or 15 times a month he buys the whole pallet 500 pieces and it's a guaranteed sale steady and he will choose hundreds of items like that and he will list them out and it's a constant profit now the problem is you need big big bankroll to do that obviously and the more you can buy the better prices you're gonna get on items um, but he started small too. He started small and, and actually turned his business into million dollar business on eBay. Um, he's got a huge warehouse, sells all kinds of stuff. Very, very successful. Um, I can't remember his name on top of my head right now, but if, if I remember, I'll make another video on it. Um, and number four, applies my number four tip applies to all of three above any of them that you choose to run a business uh, you gotta apply to every one of them and it is customer service in any business um, I don't care if you got a brick and mortar shop like me or online business customer service is number one too many people get upset over little things. Um, I think great example is, uh, and I love this company, Apple is one of my best companies that I think for is when it comes to customer service, how they treat their customers. Um, you gotta, 
you got to think, you got to put yourself in, in, in people's shoes. You got to be, you want to be treated the same you would like to be treated. So you got to treat all these people super nice. If something is wrong, something didn't get right, some, you, you send out to something to somebody and they are not happy, do everything you can in your power to make them happy. I don't understand why people get so upset. Oh, I sent this guy and, you know, he got me a bad feedback because, you know, there was a little scratch on this item and he told me I didn't describe it correctly. You probably didn't. If he's upset, you probably didn't. So customer service is number one. Um, I learned this a hard way and in my brick and mortar store and on online I treat my customers like it's gold okay they're all little babies to me and I you know make sure they're all happy because it goes a long way I cannot tell you guys how many crappy situations I was in but because of my customer service these customers became customers for life uh, and it's amazing what you can do treating people right. Um, it's just absolutely phenomenal what you can achieve and word to mouth and a repeat business that you're going to get when you treat people right. So my number one out of any, I don't care if you finding items cheap, flipping them for a lot of money, blah, 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 doesn't matter, okay? I don't care if you're making $5 on a product or $1,000 on a product. If you're not treating your customers right, you're not going to build great uh, business, period. Customer service is number one. So the bottom line, guys, is, is this business for everybody reselling? Um, I don't think so. Um, I don't think so. I mean, just like any business, you know, there's a lot of determination and you got to be very, very disciplined and you got to enjoy what you're doing. A lot of people get into this because they, th they think they, they're going to make money overnight and it's easy money. Uh, it's not easy money. It's hard work. But if you enjoy what you're doing, that it looks easy. Um, for me, I think it's easy because I love what I do. I absolutely love what I do. I, I get the thrill of the hunt uh, for those unusual and you know every day it's different. Um, that's why I maybe don't like to do so much arbitrage, you know, so much FBA, Amazon, because it, it gives me no no satisfaction, no excitement, you know. I just don't like loading up those cards with, you know, it's just like, yeah, the money is there, you know, you can make some money, but is it fun? No, it's not. Not for me, at least. I, uh, I love to, you know, go out there and hunt for those items that nobody else can get. And uh, that what keeps me ticking, you know, I wake up every morning and I go, oh my God, I got this deal set up today and I can't wait. So I don't think it's for everybody, you know, uh, you got to love what you do. Uh, and if you do take the right steps and you do it the right way and you discipline and you stay on top of things, um, you can be really, really successful. Um, you know, I re one of the reasons I opened up my shop was because I figure out that the business is, is becoming harder and harder and more and more competition um, especially finding items so I decided well I'm gonna open up a shop that actually people will bring stuff to me um, and it's working out fantastic um, yeah I'll, I'll probably have to pay a little bit more money that you would find things going out out there and hunting for them but stuff comes in to me you know i don't you know that's i figured out that you know it's as long as i have a steady flow of things coming in non-stop um there's nothing better 
and then on top of it me and my partner we both both of us constantly hunt for things you know outside of the shop so the flow of stuff coming in is just unbelievable yeah i mean it takes it takes a lot of time to build up your clientele with brick and mortar store it takes you know quite a bit of money to actually make it happen uh, especially the size of the store that i have to fill it up have enough merchandise there um, but it's extremely unique and rewarding and the, the stories that i hear and the people that come to my shop and we talk about different things is just unbelievable there is their rewards are fantastic you know money wise and uh and the people and experience you know that you go through uh, the people that work for me are absolutely fantastic. Um, I try to treat everybody the way I would want to be treated. Um, you know, so I mean, that's something else that you can look into in the future as you're running your business, you know, maybe opening up your own shop. But, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to kill this and I probably will get some haters after this video um but i don't care i'm just saying like it is you know it's it's a real w word out there and 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 you can make it happen but you just gotta keep it keep it real i mean it's a fantastic gig um if you can stay in it and and you and you love it um sky sky is no limit absolutely sky is no limit all right, guys, I think I've been rambling long enough. Uh, I thought I was going to be able to make this like a 15 minute video. Obviously, way too much information. It's it's not going to happen. A lot of subjects to cover, but I at least I gave you some kind of brief, uh, brief info how I think this business should be run. Um, hope you enjoyed it. If you guys uh, have any questions, and I, I know some of some of you have lots of questions for me, you can always message me on uh, on Facebook if you like. Use the messenger, and I will respond to you right away if I can. Uh, message me on uh, through YouTube as well, and you know, put some comments down. You guys know I I, I read all my comments. I, I really enjoy. Um, your input and what do you got to say and what do you think about my videos so i hope you guys enjoy this episode i know uh, it's sunday and it wasn't typical sunday video that i show you my, you know all my sales but there'll be plenty of those there'll be plenty of those i got lots of content ready for you guys uh, i really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing to my channel and if you are new you're watching this for the first time um subscribe click the button somewhere here i don't know here maybe there uh, so anyway thank you very much for watching uh share this video if you enjoyed it and uh, until next time guys peace